Well, hi, well, big welcome back to the channel. Well, it has been a busy few weeks. There's been lots and lots of stuff happening. It's been really fragmented, and that is the very nature of building one of these trucks. But let's go and have a look, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Right, well, we're almost there with the tool bins. So on both sides, we've got the bins pretty much done. So we've got bin to the very rear and then one on front of the mud guard as well. Uh, that's been on and off already, so that's good. Booked in to the pinch up on Friday. So we've been there for a couple of days, get them next week and then hopefully get them on. This particular bin will house our cooking area, which we haven't really sort of thought about. We know roughly what we want, but that's as far as it's gone. And then that's it really on the outside, apart from the, the rack over the cab and the bike rack which is a sort of separate entity, but uh, yeah, I think it's looking well. Everything about these tool bins is bespoke. This square bin cut out of one of the doors will accommodate the deck and handle we bought previously. We've got stainless steel hinges and access to the rear leaf spring hangers if ever required. Joe's got a parcel. What you got? I have. I have oh. a lovely Everest backer. Uh, so we have a, an S3, so 5 kilowatt hydronic heater, so a water heater basically. Uh, it's what we had, the, same as the last one, the last truck, but the newer model. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. And we've got the easy start controller as well, which is great. Uh, but the, I just want to have a look, the size of these now, they're tiny, and yet they give an incredible heat. So, fuel pump, the fuel pump in this is actually mounted, well it's, it's external effectively, uh, as is the water pump. So there we go, that is what we're talking about, that is, that is the new S3, bloody expensive. Hmm. It is a lot smaller though, isn't right. it? And the plan really today is just sort of have a look at it. Uh, that's a cover for it. Is have a look at it, see what component parts we have, see where everything's going to go. This is going to go into the, the, the tool bin beside the fuel tank. Uh, so yeah, I just want to have a look and work out in my own head where everything's going to go. So. What else is in the box? Uh, there we go. And that is pretty much it. So um, I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's a lot of gear going on here, but. And where did you where did you get the heater from? Do you want to say? Uh, I can't even remember. I was it Meller? It online? was Meller because they had they yeah. did a better price. They theirs was the best price. Yeah. So I if mean, you're watching Meller, thank you because that was a really good price. Meller online, they're really good. I mean, mm -hmm. they just stock all this sort of stuff. But they also have a really good technical department as well, don't they? They do. I mean, you, you know, the, the guys, that it's what they do every day. They're working with boats, they're working with trucks and vans. And they're sort of fought knowledge, really. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, it's always good to be able to pick a phone up to somebody as well. Yeah. If you've got a very, very specific question, which I have had. So, uh, yeah, they've been really good. Right. Okay. Hopefully get this fitted very, very soon. Not sure when. What is that, a week? Two I weeks, a month? I need back. I can't do anything without two <laughs> okay. weeks. Okay. Right, well, we're back at it. There's tools and boxes kit everywhere. And one of the first jobs I've got to do is get the water tank in. And I've got to get the water tank in because I want the aluminium frame made for that. So I've put a bit of rubber matting down so the tank doesn't slide about as much. Uh, that will actually get strapped down. The tank will get dressed with all the valves and so on. And then we'll get this aluminium frame made up for the seating area and so on. Um, and then really it's about getting the drainage and drainage, drainage is, is key. The waste tank is actually almost dead centre of the vehicle, which is great from a sort of a weight distribution point of view. So I've got to get that in uh, before I get the floor in. Uh, so that the drainage will actually sit within the subfloor itself. So yeah, let's get on with it. So today it's all about the water tank really. So I've just spent about half an hour sort of dressing the tank on the outside because obviously it's going to be easier doing it on the bench as opposed to doing it in here because everything is really tight and I knew everything is going to be tight because 
apart from the actual fittings on the water tank, by the time I get everything into this space, in terms of the calorithea and the water pumps and so on, the water filtration system, then there's just going to be no space at all. And trying to sort of do that post fitting would just be a disaster. That aside, we've got the, I've left 50 mil around the, the outside actually of the tank and that's for the aluminium frame that's basically going to sort of house the tank and then obviously facilitate the, uh, the, the floor on top of the tank and the seating area on top of that. So uh, it's a good start, but a long way to go. So we'll let the job this morning really is to try and get this air conditioning unit fitted. I've got some conduit that I've got to put up. The electrical cable is sort of there. I might have to be extended. And then obviously that needs to be, you know, bracketed to the floor um, and then obviously secured. So hopefully I'll get that in this morning. That one's lingering a little bit. Okay, so there is our air conditioning unit. There is the little rubber mat that I've sort of just templated out. So the air conditioning unit here is going to sit on this and I've obviously got some holes to cut through so this hole here has to get cut out and this has to get cut out all right and then we've got the two drain points as well so yeah a bit of work to do and then that'll come out at the back of the uh, the vehicle itself we've got Richard fabricating a couple of little uh, sort of sleeves really for the floor for the air conditioning unit. Uh, he's done a really sort of tidy job, to be honest with you. That is basically what we're talking about. And I'm just asking to put a bit of mesh on there as well, all right, just to stop any vermin. <laughs> and then on the inside, I'll put a bit of mosquito net as well, uh, just to stop the bugs coming in. Uh, but it's this sort of thing, um, because the floor's so deep, um, what they give you, what they sort of provide, isn't adequate. So again, it just needs another little bit of fabrication another little expense uh, but it has to be right because it's exposed at the bottom of the truck as well right at the rear behind the rear wheels so you're going to get a bit of road grime in there and a bit of crap so i want to get them in do it once do it properly get them bonded in and then i can just forget about them so that's the plan <laughs> Fixing brackets are hidden underneath and the next job is to get it powered up. Right, air conditioning is in. I've just temporarily sort of put the hoses in, piped them into the box. I'm gonna go for lunch, leave it for half an hour and see how it performs. Well, there's no question it is definitely colder in here, but it is only about 20 degrees uh, outside today. Uh, so time will tell whether or not it's true effective but this will actually be piped into the bedroom and that's really the main reason why we're sort of putting this in so at least we can get a good night's sleep but it's you know coming out of the pipes it is icy cold which is lovely uh, so yeah we'll take that well it has been another really really busy week there's lots happening there is kit everywhere we've been ordering lots and lots of bits and pieces uh, from diesel water heaters to Aldi fins on the floor heating, uh, I've been at Screwfix, uh, b and Wolseley, for all the plumbers merchants, uh, the local builders merchants as well, gathering up lots and lots of bits and pieces. And honestly, I'm going to, I'll pan the camera around in a minute so you can see this because there is just stuff everywhere. So the water tank is slightly out of situ at the moment. So we've got a shower tray in pieces. There's silicon, there's everything you can imagine dotted about the place. So yeah, lots and lots happening, and it's pretty frantic right now, if I'm honest with you. Well, we do these crazy things sometimes. I've actually got the trailer hooked up at the moment. I've got the water tank in the trailer. It's pretty much sort of swallowing the trailer. Um, and I've just stopped at my neighbor, Kevin's, and put about 300 liters of water into the tank. And I'm driving about the countryside right now. It's obviously slushing about big time. It's only about half full. And I'm, I'm just sort of checking for leaks really. One, making sure the tank's okay, and two, all my plumbing fittings are right, because obviously once it's in, it's in, and I don't want any hassle. So I just thought it's actually a really good thing to do. Gives me that peace of mind, but I'm actually gonna leave the water in it over the weekend. I'm gonna leave it in the yard uh, until Monday morning, and I'll check it, make sure there's no leaks. And once I'm happy, I'll obviously dump the water, get the tank in, and then that'll be it. It'll live there forevermore. Right, well the courier's just been, 
and we've just taken charge of this Gen 3 Starlink. So hopefully this will sort us out in terms of staying connected whilst we're on the road. It's going to sit flat on the roof, right beside the rear roof light. We've left enough space between the solar panels to fit this in. Uh, we've ordered the mount for it as well, it's coming separately and it's pretty flush actually. In fact, if I just open it up, you can sort of see how low profile this is. Well, the tank's been sat here all weekend. It is dry, so I'm really sort of happy. That means I can get this tank emptied and get it in there. Well, right now, it's all about the inside space. And I've just got the calorifia, which is just here. And I'm going to put it on risers because of the cutout on the front, um, it's sort of pushing it into the box a little bit. So I'm going to raise it up by about 100 mil, which will push it back against that back wall. And that will still give me a really good amount of space uh, just in front of that. Um, but I've still got the water purification kit to come from Germany. I've got the diesel heater. Uh, and there's a few of bits and pieces that need to go in there, such as the expansion tank. So I really sort of need to get a water purification kit before I can sort of understand how much space I have or I haven't got, uh, and then we'll sort of go from there. But I'm reasonably confident that uh, we're okay for space. I've got an air heater to get in as well, but my initial thinking is that the air backer is actually going to go in the outside bin, and then I'll just pipe it in. So I don't know, I think, I've got options, I'm pretty certain. Both ways could work, but we'll see. So I've just been sort of cutting and drilling a little bit of profile to mint for this uh, water tank to sit on. Uh, and it's gonna, I think it's gonna work out really well. I'm gonna maximize the space, which is ultimately what I'm looking to do. So Stephen's in here this morning. He's actually working on this aluminum frame. This section here, which sort of encloses the, the water tank, is almost done. Uh, and then we can sort of sheet that over on top. And then it's just a case of sort of doing the, the box work effectively uh, for the seating area, left and right, and a little bit sort of either side of the door. So that's happening this morning. <laughs> We remove the aluminium framework in order to sort out the tank retaining straps. These are stainless steel which have been fabricated in the same way as a truck fuel tank, whereby it's fixed at one side and screwed up tight at the other. I cut a few lengths of rubber to sit under the straps, one so it can be pulled up taut with a little give and two to prevent any chafing. The initial seating framework has come together nicely and you can start to see how it's going to look. The aluminium top hats get fitted to the framework, ready to be clad with ply. Well, there's lots going on right now. So we've got the seating area almost done. So the seats are actually made, but what's going to happen is we've got some rails, some top hats going across here, as you can see. And then the wood, the ply effectively will sit on that. And then the seating area left and right will sit and be bolted on that onto the floor and onto the sides. Uh, the floor in the middle will be doubled up because uh, we need something to bolt into uh, in terms of fixing the table base. And then we've got boxes absolutely everywhere. So there's there's a lot of kit. We've been sort of buying and accumulating lots and lots of bits. And hopefully once the bed is covered up, the bed area is covered up, and uh, Stephen's just in the middle of putting the top hats on there as well. So you can see we've got the rails going on here. I've got the air conditioning unit, it's in, it's running, I'm really happy with it, so that's good. And then we'll get this covered as well, and then I can put some of these boxes on there and just give myself a little bit of space in order to do the next phase really, which is the drainage uh, and all the plumbing and the subfloor and all of that good stuff. Get that first fix done. And uh, yeah, we're kind of... We're certainly well on our way then. Right, well, we're nearly there with the steps and the platform. Stephen's been working on the feet this morning. Uh, so we've got these adjustable feet. 
and uh, I think it's looking pretty good uh, it's fairly stable there's still a little impingement that we're working on uh, because I want it to be right you know we have spent a lot of time and a lot of money on this and uh, we're obviously going to use it every day so it has to be right In between jobs, I make time to fit a small temporary handhold, so I tape it to the box for the correct position before cutting. There will be a larger recessed grab handle going in here, but right now it's not a priority. All right, so this morning is all about trying to sort of find space for everything, and I've got most of the bits and, pl uh, bits and pieces in place. And we're doing okay for space uh but one of the things that's sort of apparent really when you start to sort of unbox everything is there's lots and lots of different um hose requirements if you like or fitting requirements because some things are half inch some things are three quarter inch some things are odd numbers like a 19 mil 17 mil fittings uh and obviously it's got to come together somehow so you've you know sometimes you're you've got a an ever spiker connecting to this and the two hole sizes don't necessarily meet so it's just i'm just at the process now i'm sort of looking at that understanding what fittings i need and how long you know how many meters of holes i need and then we'll go from there okay after oh weeks of waiting we've finally got our parcel from the netherlands i think it made a start and then got sent back and germany, now it's here again sorry germany <laughs> <laughs> but anyway it's here so this is a, a exciting moment what you got phil We have parcel two of our water filtration system. So I'm standing on tiptoes trying to see into the box. Uh, we have some. Ah, okay. So this is the pipe and the gauze filter for the river or the lake or a water source. Uh, invoice. <laughs> we don't want that. Information. We've got cartridge, the filter, another foot cartridge, oh my god, okay, we've got lots of packaging, wow, lots of packaging, so we've got a couple of filters, so we've got two separate sets of filters, one is fast flow for safe water, so if you're on a campsite for example, or a water source that you're pretty happy with you've got a set of fast flow filters and then you've got another set if you're filling up for the river from the river surface or water or yeah. surface water yeah so so that is where we're and at the filters are all ceramic which means they don't have to be replaced they can be cleaned so that's the second set of filters uh and then we've got the housing itself from oh, yeah. water <laughs> actually all we've really got is a whole load of bubble wrap there's nothing in there at all. So, uh, yeah, so that is it. So here we go. Like we have some famous water. Well, I have those. to say, it's certainly very, very well wrapped. It is. That wasn't going to come to any harm, was it? No. And that is what we're talking about, really. Oh yeah. So you've got sort of filter in there, filter in there, water in, water out. It's quite big, isn't it? And that's it. Yeah, it's a reasonable quite chunky. size. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So that's almost the last piece of the parcel in terms of me being able to work out space within that sort of void space. Uh, so I'm really pleased to get that today because tomorrow is Friday and it's nice to sort of be nice to have a look at that before the weekend. Make sure I've got enough space. Okay, so this is effectively what we're talking about. So this is the first manifold that you're going to meet when you're trying to put water in. And there's basically two routes. Okay, so one of the routes, it's actually pumped in from surface water. So if you're filling up, filling up from a, a lake or a river. And then the other route, which is basically going to come in from a campsite, for example. So pressurized water coming in here. It comes out here, all right, and then effectively that's the start of it. And then from here, it goes into the filters. 
right so you can sort of see here it's slightly different the one with the four is exactly the same except it's got four so on these obviously you've got your little tap so this is effectively water in okay and then water coming out okay and then obviously you've got the ability to isolate them as well um and that's pretty much it so yeah it's slightly different to that one okay because there's no valves on that one and that's it and hopefully we'll get these mounted over the next couple of days so i made this little diagram because i just thought it'd be a little bit easier so effectively there are your two roots in and one of them here we've got this pump and it's a really powerful pump and then effectively there is the little manifold that we've just been talking about okay so there's your two roots in and effectively the water comes in here in through the famous water filters and then into the fresh water tank and clearly it's clean by this point it then comes out into another pump and then from this point on it's actually pressurized so it then comes into uh, this other little manifold and then gets fed out then from these four so what you have is then you've got effectively you've got the kitchen sink the washing machine the shower and the sink and the, our toilet and then the outdoor shower and this is all cold at this point that's for those three and then the fourth one effectively comes down goes through goes into the calorifia okay and then that's where things sort of start to change a little bit because you've got a cold feed in and then effectively you've got hot water coming out and when the hot water comes out effectively it goes into yet another manifold and then we've got a hot the hot tap in the kitchen hot tap in the shower and the, the bathroom sink okay and then the outdoor shower so it's it's sort of fairly simple and then the other ways then or the ways of um heating the water effectively we've basically got the embers backer which is here okay so you've got a basically you've got a flow and return and then we've got the truck as well so same again flow flow and return in the truck because you've got a twin cowl in the color of fear i mean what i haven't put on here is all the the breathers the drain valves and all the bits and pieces so it's a pretty simplistic little drawing really and uh that effectively is what's going in the truck Right, Izzy, what have you got? Oh, some made up pasta thing with chicken and bacon and creme fraiche, tomatoes, passata, peas. Not sure why, but we had some peas, so we chucked those in. Especially it looks all right. Tasty. It looks like something we might eat on the road, actually. It does. We like that sort of food, though, don't it's, we? Uh, lazy food. It's a bit lazy. I've been slaving all day. And this well, is I what, haven't. This is what I get. Slop. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. Just slopping it on your head in a minute. That looks pretty good actually. It smells good. It does. Good. Okay. Time to eat. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Join us next week. I'm going to try and get another video out next week because I've got lots of content. There's lots and lots of stuff still happening, such as these brush bars behind me and lots of other bits and pieces. So stick with us. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.